Hi everyone, Donna McElvaney here, and today we're going to be doing another planned pooling video. Uh, this time in Red Heart Super Saver Platoon. So the first thing we look at is what size hook, and it says a 5.5 size I9 hook. And um, I've noticed that that's the common size for pooling with uh, Red Heart yarns with these uh, Super Saver. I love Platoon. It's got um, these great colors in it. And uh, let's see hear how we do with it. All right. So I've got my eye hook and I'm going to just start chaining until I find a repeat in it. I haven't done this one yet. Um, I've seen it posted many times. I don't think that the repeating pattern is too terribly long. Nope, it looks like that is it. Perfect. Good deal. So let's let's go ahead and let's do two sequences on it because it um it doesn't seem like it's very long. You want three sequences? Let's do three. Alright, we started with the beige, so we're gonna start with a very light beige on the hook. That's where we started. Let's see, that's only, that's two sequences. No, this is one. This is two. Let's do a third. All right, go all the way through the beige until I get to the next beige. All right, so I've got beige on my hook. And now we're going to begin the moss stitch. I go into the third from the hook. One, two, three. That's just where I go. So I do a single crochet and then a chain one. And then I skip one and I go into that next one to do another single crochet. This is the moss stitch. Very good. You want to make sure that you don't have muddy legs. I've chained one, so now I'm going to skip one and go into here. You want to make sure that your color transitions into your next stitches are nice and crisp. That you don't have split color legs. Muddy legs. Split colors, you don't want that. Alright, so I've got two of the beige, two of this uh, darker beige brown into the brown. Three stitches there. That one is transitioning a bit into that color. Actually, I just realized something. This is black. And this is brown. So this is not one section and this one section. So in all actuality, this is one section because this is almost black and this is brown. Okay, so this is actually one section here. So we've got the beige and then two bronze on the sides of this blacker color and then the beige and then two other shades of brownish that goes into a darker brown and then beige again that goes into I'm gonna call it black okay so with that being said that is one section all right I'm just thinking of if I should uh, just redo the video or not and I'm gonna say no I'm just gonna keep going alright so now we begin so I'm glad I chained through um, three sections which actually wasn't three three sequences at all Right. 
I don't set out to make mistakes on purpose, but it tends to work out okay for the videos. Okay, so I've got these two sandy beige colors. Bronze, one, two, three, four. And then it goes into the bronze again, but I'm not going to get a stitch out of it. So what that means is I'm going to count this as one section. One, two, three, four, five stitches in the black section because this bronze might wind up being on this far side instead of this near side. Hopefully we'll keep it um, going in the right direction. It'll look more clean or crisp doing it that way. Okay. Let's see what I can do here. I'm not going to make this one as tight as I had it. Because it was making these come out not even either. Okay, so two of that, two of those, two of those on each side of this black section. Now let's see what happens with the dark brown section. So with the dark brown section, I've got these two that go into one, two, three, four, and it is a split leg, but we're going to count this as one section, one, two, three, four, and then another one, one, two, one, two, three, four, and then one, and then it goes back and starts into this beige again that goes into the darker, the black section. Okay, so we want to make sure that we keep those even. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time. So now I'm going to turn it, and instead of doing any manipulation here, I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing that I did over here. Two stitches of that. And then it's one. of that bronze colored and then the black one two three two three and then the split bronze and then those two sandy colored that goes into the brown section so this is an exact mirror image of the first row. I didn't do any manipulating of stitches or turns on this row. So I've got one, two, three, four, the two. That goes into this so one on that side one two three four and then two on this side so one on that side one two three four two nope need one more all right so I'm looking here so I have these two here these two one two three and a split one two three and a split and then one. Okay. So now, they're both exact mirror images of each other. So if I continue the way that I'm doing, I'm gonna be stacking them 
So the next to come are these two stitches here, which is these two stitches here. So if I do these one and two, it's going to start stacking immediately. So if I squeeze it and maybe, I don't think I can get a third one out of it, no. Okay, so I'm going to keep going because I want to show you, see how we're, we're stacking. All right, so on this turn here, I can eat up a stitch in this turn to make them offset by one. So now this stitch lands here. So this stitch is here and this goes this way. In my other videos, the, dis the pattern goes this way, but in this one, the pattern is going to be going this way. So I'm looking to see where my stitches land to make sure if they land in the correct place. I see that I was coming up to a color change, so I wanted to stop and look and see. So this one here is going to be landing here. One and two. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there's the dark brown, which goes here. So I see I'm coming up to a color change here, so I want to see my color change is here, which needs to go here. So that's those two. And then this first stitch is going to go here of this other color. Chain two, turn. All right, color change, color change. It goes here. So this is definitely a different way um, of pulling. I haven't done it this way in one of my videos before, but uh, it's just kind of the way that I went with it today. So my color change, and here's my color change, and it's going to go here. As long as you're offset by one, it doesn't matter which direction that it slants in. So here I am looking at the yarn that's on my finger, I'm coming up to it and I notice I'm coming into a color change. So I'm on brown. So find your brown be below it. And my color, it changes colors here. So that is correct. I want it to change color right here. And then another stitch goes here. All right. So on this side, I did a modified puff stitch to eat up some of the yarn. Typically, I don't do it on the non-tail side, but um, as you can see, it can be done on either side. And I did not have to do a puff stitch here. I was able to eat up enough yarn in this turn, in this chain, to where my color change is right here. So this is my row that I'm looking at. This is my row. The next stitch is the dark black. And that's where I want it to be. One, two, three, and I see a color change. I see I went into a color change here, so I want to stop and look. A 
color changes here, so that is correct. Color change, color change. Color change, so I look and make sure, color change. Color change. One, two, three, and it goes into a color change here with two stitches of this color. So I can tighten that up a little bit just to make it match that color change a little bit better. So it looks like I'm almost gonna stack here, but this isn't the correct row that I'm looking at. I'm looking at this row here. So land two of these, chain up two, bronze and bronze. And then it goes into the black here, here, and here. So whenever you make an adjustment to one of your stitches to make it offset, depending on where you make that adjustment at, depends on which way your pattern is going to go. So I did mine opposite what I normally do, and it is pulling in the opposite direction. Alright, we see the color change here. Sorry, I noticed that I keep pulling down this direction. I don't mean to, I'm sorry. Color change here. So if I'm not sure I'm correct on this corner here, I stop and I turn and I look and see. So right here, it needs to be going into the black more. And that black stitch needs to be here. If I don't do that here, I am going to begin stacking. So now I'm stacking. And if I keep going, this row is going to stack. So I need to pull this back. I need to eat up some more yarn over here. You can eat it up different ways. You don't have to do a puff stitch. I just tend to do that. You can actually go back some and you can loosen these stitches up to where you don't have to do a puff stitch right there. So I'm going to loosen these. And now I'm on the black. So I did not have to do a puff stitch there on that corner. color change that bronze is right here and now that beige goes here so in my videos I've shown several several different ways to pull you can uh, do the modified puff on the long tail side I always call it that um, it's easier to remember and doing it on that side um, Instead of going this way, your pattern will go this way. On this side here, we're making the modification on this, uh, on this opposite side. I did a puff stitch, and then I also loosened them up to where you don't have to do a puff stitch. So 
Sometimes though, the yarn is just, that color section may be just way too long, that segment, and you would have to do some manipulating um, to eat up some of the extra yarn. Sometimes it just happens and you just have to do that. Sometimes I've also seen it have to be done like in the middle of a project. I try to avoid that myself. Um, sometimes my stitches get really, really loose in the middle of one color segment. And you know, it happens. Sometimes you have to do it. All right, so here we start with the black. And we gotta get one, two, three black stitches. One, two, and three. Perfect. And then the bronze goes here. So see the color change the brown it's going right up into here almost split that V just now all right so I'm watching for a color change color change stop and check it's right here color change right here but I'm gonna make these more loose because I know I'm coming up to this corner so I want to eat up some of that black in that corner so only one two of my black ones need to land and then that one there needs to be the bronze so make these a little bit more loosely here see if I can do it almost not quite I'm gonna go ahead and add a puff stitch here and you can see on this corner like it's nice and straight it's not all wonky like it can get sometimes I'm gonna go ahead and do a puff a modified puff it's just kind of only like a half puff stitch and that's what it looks like there And then there's a bronze. And then two of those beige. And I want to show you, even with that puff stitch there, like, oh my gosh, that just looks so terrible. Uh, whenever you come back around to here to put a stitch in here, and you put a stitch in that, it really doesn't show up. It doesn't look that bad. Some people freak out with um, puff stitches on the sides. And honestly, it does not look, you're, you're really not drawn to it. You don't see it well. Um, it doesn't stand out. And other people are not gonna see it. Making sure I'm on track here. So here's my browns and here's this um, transition color, this beige color. So here I only had like um, one stitch in this color and I wound up with three of these. So I want to make sure that this color lands where it's supposed to be. And then this matches up with here, and this with here, and this with here. Chain two turn. I need to have two black ones, one here and one here. And then this one here will need to be my bronze color. Two black and there's the bronze but it's um, it's kind of a split leg too two 
two of these. My transition color, making sure the color changes in the correct spot, and it is. And a color change again. And here's my color change. So that is correct. So this is the only video that I've done so far where um, it's going in the opposite direction. Whenever it goes in the opposite direction, you let this color be your guide. Whenever you're going in this direction, as you're crocheting in, you look at your stitches underneath and let that be your guide. So there are many, many different ways to pull. So here we are back to where that puff stitch, that modified puff was there at the bottom underneath it. So I'm going to move this over, make sure I don't split this V, do my stitch. I may have to do, I'm going to loosen this up because I wasn't thinking they'll probably have to do another modified there. Some people um, especially if it's a scarf, they don't want to put a border on it. If you do put a border on it, then it definitely doesn't show. Alright, so I almost ate up enough yarn here to go into this bronze stitch. And see, and it's, um, it's more loose. The stitches are a lot more loose here. So I can go back and I can leave it the way that that was, or I can put in a modified. I don't mind the modified puff at all. Chain two, turn. And whenever you go in to put a border in it, you just put the border right at the, you let that V stitch be your guide and that's where you put in the border on the side. You would go here and don't do the hook side. You put the border here and you would, I moss stitch around whenever I do a border. I did a video on it too. Here at the bottom of the V, the bottom of the V, the bottom of the V, the bottom of the V. And you just put a moss stitch all the way around. And if you don't want to put a border, like say if it's for a scarf and you just want to leave it like that, really and truly, it doesn't, it doesn't show. And see how we have the nice argyle pattern going. I had not even stop to really pay attention to make sure that I was going correctly. I'll check it here in my turn. Chain two, turn. And bronze. And here we see the bronze going up right here where it needs to be. And then the two beige. See, the beiges are going to merge here, so we always have to make sure that we're looking at the right pattern um, going in the correct direction that we're going in. Whenever they start merging, it can get confusing, and you can get a little lost, and then you can start uh, following the wrong pattern, and then you get all messed up. So trust that you were going correct. Trust that you were doing it right. Sometimes if you stop, if you sit back, if you take a picture of it, it really shows up in a picture really well on your camera. And I have to sneeze. I'm sorry. Excuse me. 
So if you follow it in, um, if you take a picture of it in your camera, it, it really looks, uh, you can really see it then the pattern stands out a lot better. In a picture like on your phone, So now I'm like, okay, where am I here? So I'm trying to figure out which way I'm needing to go. So, and then I realized, okay, I needed to eat up an extra stitch in this turn because here is my bronze. So this stitch here that I just put in that's black actually needs to be the bronze. So I'm just gonna do a modified And let's see, let me do a little bit slower for people. So I go like I'm gonna do a single crochet and then I yarn over, go back into the same place, pull up another loop and then I pull through all those loops. Chain two turn and a bronze. I'm where I should be. All right, so that is another different way of pooling. You don't always have to do a modified puff on a corner if that's where you're offsetting your stitches. In some of my other videos, I offset a stitch by taking one of these out. All my um, corners wind up being the same. I chain two, none of those count as like I don't have to eat up any yarn in a turn because I have either removed a stitch or added a stitch color um, through one of the color segments. That is another way of pooling. And whenever I do that, I make sure that I mark it so I know where that section is coming up at. So I know to either loosen up my stitches or tighten up my stitches, just depends. So. Uh, also in my other videos, I always did the puff stitch on the long tail side. And in this one, I'm not. I'm doing it on the opposite side. So just a nice variation of different techniques of pooling. And this one here, the design goes this way. So you're approaching it and you have to um, let your yarn be your guide you're going into a color change stop and look is it time for a color change yet yes it is time for that color change all right so I hope this one didn't confuse anyone it can do that But hopefully it didn't confuse you even more. And maybe it gave you that aha moment too of like, okay, so this can be done many different ways. There's not one exact way to pull. There are different ways to get that argot pattern. And I hope that uh, these demonstrations help you guys to help it to click for you. Remember, let's see here, eat up a stitch because I got to eat up that bronze. All right. And then my PSA that I'm adding to my videos, don't take a floral quinolone antibiotic. Cipro, Levaquin, Avalox, Levofloxacin, Ciprofloxacin, um, unless your life depends on it because it could kill you. Uh, currently, I'm disabled from taking Levaquin. So it's messed up my Achilles tendons pretty bad, my um, several joints, my wrists, and stuff. Thankfully, I'm able to crochet, but it has messed me up quite a bit. So I try to tell everybody don't, 
if uh, your doctor prescribes that to you, ask for an alternative. Ask for something different. Because it can disable you and it can even kill you. And I hope this, um, I hope these videos help you guys. And if you would like, subscribe. Helps me to keep putting more of these videos out. And uh, I hope that helps. Hope you like it. And happy pulling, everyone. And uh, God bless. Thank you.